Hi friends! Welcome to episode 37 of the Corky Monday Craftcast. My name is Kalisha and you can find me anywhere online as Nadira Tani. Thank you so much for coming to spend some more time with me today. Um, if you're a new viewer, welcome. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. And today is April 30th. I checked it before I started filming. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I'm coming to you from my home in Central Florida where it is a beautiful day. It's a beautiful Florida day. Clouds in the sky, not too hot. A thumbs up this day. Um, yeah, so this is a space online where I talk about all of my multi-crafts. And I do have a multitude of crafts to share with you today. So we will get started with my finished objects. And I have one. In true Kalisha fashion, the, the ends are not woven in. I did take a picture and I hid them because this is my big green cardigan uh, that I will be entering into um, Zakia of Lady Wing Crafts podcast, Spring Garment Cow, which ends today. So by the time you see this, it will probably be closed. Um, but last episode I was <laughs> moaning about not having a name for this cardigan and I got a whole bunch of really cool name suggestions but um, I was talking to one of my friends about it and I was like yeah I need it I need a cool name for my cardigan and she was like Chester <laughs> so I was like okay <laughs> so this is my Chester cardigan because why not and um, <clears throat> I sent it through the washer and the dryer so the uh, the yarn has softened up a lot. I still want to do some steam blocking on the sleeves, but here it is. Look at it. So um, the, the main yarn, the green yarn is Karen one pound. So it's all 100% acrylic. So Karen one pound, when I was working with this before washing and drying it, it was like really, really stiff. So this has softened up quite a lot. Like it's got a little drape to it now. Um, the contrast yarn is Red Heart Super Saver Aaron Fleck. And then this green yarn is actually Red Heart Super Saver Patty Green, I think. Yeah, this is patty green. I think this was just like green. Keep us hunting through the bushes again, as is her tradition whenever I'm out here podcasting. So yeah, um, I'll put it on so that you can see how it fits. The collar is still a little, mm, not quite right, but because this is hot, this, this, is, this is hot. Um, because I was just kind of like crocheting out of my brain I'm not even I'm not even like upset about it so as you can see if I pull it together like this it gaps in the back because I should have put decreases in here and I can't be bothered to rip this collar out and put it on again um, primarily because this collar was not worked in one piece um, I don't know why I decided this was the best way to go about this particular section of this of this uh, cardigan but it's there's a join right here but I'll show you that close up in a second so here it is I'll insert a picture of me wearing it so that you can see it in like a better way but it doesn't have any closures I think what I'm going to do um, I have these I think they're hook and eye closures, but they're large hook and eye closures. And I might put one right here and maybe like one right here, just so that I can hook it closed if I want to. But yeah, I really like how snuggly and like cozy the body is, but the sleeves, as you can see, are like perfectly fitted. So I am gonna do some steam blocking on them and stretch them out just a little bit. Um, of course, being careful not to kill it, like uh, to kill the acrylic but I definitely I'm gonna I'm gonna steam it with an iron and then just stretch it out just a smidge on both sides because that's like right onto my arm so 
The Chester cardigan is done. The only other thing that I'm gonna do to it to make it like, um, like finish, finish, finished, uh, other than weaving in my ends, because I am gonna weave in my ends, I am going to put a facing fabric on the back here. So to encase all of the floats. I mean, they don't bother me because they're not super long or anything, but um, if I have the opportunity to put like a fun fabric on something, I'm gonna put a fun fabric on something. So I'm gonna find like a really fun, maybe green, not maybe, definitely like a green fabric with like a fun pattern just to put along the inside here. And then that'll be Chester all done. It's really cozy and I'm, I'm hot now. <sighs> so we'll take it off. Yeah, so <clears throat> as you can see here, there's the join. And I think the reason, why did I do it like that? I think because I, I didn't wanna have any joins on the edges because I worked the front bands from the bottom up. And then when I got here, I just started decreasing in and then um, crocheted halfway across and then back and forth and back and forth. And then when I did the second side, I did the same thing, came up the front and then crocheted back and forth, joining it as I went, which this join worked a lot better, like a lot quicker because I was, I finally figured out <laughs> the whole situation with the joining of the front bands and doing it properly. So I am very proud of myself, like very, very proud of this whole thing. So yeah. That is a finished cardigan. A finished super thick winter cardigan for this gal who lives in Florida. Like this hat that I have on my head is, is a little bit too hot for today, but um, my hair, it's not, it's not safe right now. It's wilding out y'all, it's wilding out. Gotta keep it together, keep it together. All right. So um, that's my only finished object, but um, in between filming and editing last week's video and today, two of my testers have finished their um, puppy love shawls, and oh my gosh, they're beautiful. So I'm going to put up pictures of both of their um, puppy love shawls, and It is so satisfying. Like, okay, I, I went into it last week just about how crazy it feels to have come up with something, written a pattern for it, given the pattern to somebody else to make sure that I'm not like speaking gibberish and they are able to like make the product the way it's intended and, it lo and it's a correct. It was great. So all I have left to do for that pattern um, in preparation for the release is um, I'm going to film a video on my crochet brioche technique. Um, because both of the testers were saying, you know, they understood it from what I wrote, but they both said that it would be better to have like a video tutorial on how to do it. So I'm gonna get that filmed um, at some point this week so that I can then figure out how to do the whole Ravelry pattern thing. So, and I have to take pictures. I still need to take pictures of the Puppy Love Shawl. Oh, so many things to do, so many things to do. So we will move right on into works in progress and I have a few. The first I'm gonna show you is a big one. It's a non-yarn related um, whip. So those are always fun for me. And I have this tote bag. So a while ago, actually like a few episodes ago, I was talking about how I wanted to do um, a, a silhouette tote bag where um, I would have the like an Afro silhouette and in the, in the hair have the word cumulus because cumulus, like the clouds, comes from the Latin word for, the Latin word meaning um, like a pile. So cumulus. 
So um, this is actually, but the silhouette that I worked from was actually from a profile picture that I took of myself. So yeah, um, as you can see, the face I did with a matte black um, acrylic paint. This is just acrylic paint. And then the hair is actually kind of a glossy acrylic paint mixed with a little bit of gold so that it, you can see the difference in the, in the tones there. And then I just kind of was just vibing out in my head um, and decided to dry brush some gold around. I think I might actually, um, I don't know, do some more splatters and stuff like that because this just looks like it got dirty. So I need to go heavier with this background treatment. And then I'm not entirely sure what I'm gonna do for the background, so there's that. But I really love how this is coming out so far. The next thing I need to do is put the letters, um, or put the, the word in her hair. But it's a really big tote bag. As you guys know, I am a big bag lady. Um, the tote bag I got from Hobby Lobby. So um, I forget how much it was, maybe like $5 or something like that. And yeah, I can't wait for this to be done. Um, I posted like a little picture of it on Instagram and I got a couple likes on it. So I think it's a cool thing. The next, I'll put that aside. <clears throat> the next whip, I'm just going to show you real quick. Is this it? Yeah. I'm just going to show you real quick. This is the braiding party slouch. Um, uh oh. Hello. There we go. This is the braiding party slouch. I have finished all of the the body, like the working flat for the body. Um, I finished all of those repeats and now I am going into the decreases. So in my original notes, I wrote to make the body like eight to nine inches. And I think this body is like seven to eight. So I think that'll be fine. This hat is, Oh, this is the Seaforth hat, by the way, by uh, Carrie Westerman. But this hat is about nine inches before the decreases, and I feel like it has a bit too much slouch in it for me. So this one should be good. And then I'm gonna do the decreases. I put in my lifeline, as you can see, well, maybe you can see. Yeah, I put in a lifeline right there, so I'm ready to, do, to go right into the first row of the decreases. And um, so yeah, this is gonna be the last time that you see this hat, definitely until it is a finished object, which shouldn't be more than a couple of weeks. So that's that. Oh, the braiding party hat is a pattern that I'm working on. Um, the yarn is Joy DK in the cloud colorway and 100% um, acrylic. Awesome, I like it, I like it a lot. Um, actually got like quite a laugh because Hannah of the um, Cozy Cottage Crochet podcast made a beautiful, um, what was it called? Summer Diamonds Kimono? Summer Diamond Kimono, I think, by One Dog Wolf. And she used the same yarn in the same colorway. So I like to think that we are like yarn twins but I do want to make that kimono. Um, I think it's in my, I think I put it in my, um, my Ravelry library, but I have looked at it quite a couple times and um, seeing hers finished really made me think like, okay, Kalisha, we need to go ahead and, and make this happen. So yes, that is the braiding party hat. <clears throat> um, next time you see that, it will be an FO. And we are gonna move on to my last work in progress, which I am so proud of y'all, because this is for the As Seen on TV cow that me and Melody of the Melody Crochet Podcast are hosting. Um, it is going until June 1st, and the premise of this crochet along or this knit along or what have you is um, to remake something that you've seen on TV, TV, movie, whatever. So I am doing um, a blanket that I saw in the background of the movie Southside with You. And um, as I've been doing, I'll pop up a picture so you guys can see it.
but after so much trial and error, so much frogging, so much frogging, I have settled on Kiva, get out the bushes. Get out the bush, girl. Thank you. I have settled on my pattern. So let me show you. I'm so excited about this, guys. All right, so by now I would have already put up the picture. Oh, I would have already put up the picture so that you can see what I'm working from. And this is what I did. Look at it. So you've got the clusters in the corners, um, as you can see in the in the picture. Um, I just pulled this one like closed, but the wide middle. I started out with a um, a circle, like just an even circle, and then uh, squared it off in the second round. Um, that way, I don't have those those gaps here like I had last week but um, yeah I really like it so this is the color scheme that I'm going with I'm making this for um, one of my friends is having a little boy in July so I'm making him a blanket and so far I have four four blocks done for the baby blanket I want to make it um, roughly I think roughly 40 inches across like 40 inch square and each one of these um, when I stretched it out to like like the size that I want to have it and it's not even like I'm not even stretching it really hard I'm just like squaring it off is about a seven inch square so um, I'm gonna do a six by six at least that's the plan that's a lot of squares y'all but anyway I have four done and just gonna be chugging along I am making this from oh the biggest difference from last week I took out the gray and replaced it with white because the gray and the light blue it was just really really low contrast and I didn't like it so that's that's what I got oh you know what I can actually show you a picture of that gray um, Hello, reflection of everything. There. You see how that's like super low contrast between the gray and the light blue? And then this, this is just a lot better. So that, that was the block when I figured out how I wanted to do it. Um, and the biggest thing that helped me really make the block work was moving the starting point. So typically, at least the way that I do, um, like granny squares or any kind of square motif like this, I start in the corner, like almost all the time. By starting in the corner, I had a turning chain and then the cluster. And then when I came back around um, in this particular pattern, you do the last double crochet and then you chain and then you join into or you chain and then you go into the next cluster. So I was coming around doing the last double crochet, chaining, and then having to join into that chain and then slip stitch, and it was just looking really, really messy. So instead of starting in the corner, I moved it to the middle of the, like, the middle of the side. Now, the joins here aren't as neat as I would like them to be. I'm definitely gonna have to work on that. Primarily, they're not so, so neat because I was working on this at like some ungodly hour of the night, as I do but I also just carried the white yarn up the back, so I only have the blue ends and then two ends from the white. And I think I'm just gonna continue doing that, but I'm just going to change the way that I'm uh, switching colors. Anyhow, by moving the, uh, the starting point or the turning chain to the middle of the row, that allowed me to have clean corners for the rest of the, um, the round which I really like so that's that I have four of these um, I'm doing what six by six I said so 24 I have 20 more to go I can do it 
I got this. So yeah. Um, oh, I was telling you what I'm making this out of. 100% acrylic, once again. Um, and 100% from Sash. So this is, this is Red Heart um, Pound, one pound. Red Heart Super Saver, one pound. I feel like it has a special name, but whatever. You know what I'm talking about. Um, the Both of the blue... Nope, nope. Red Heart Super Saver, one pound. The light blue is Karen United in light blue. And then the navy, I'm assuming, is a Red Heart Super Saver in like navy or something like that. It was It's a ball that I had in my stash with no tag, so... It feels like Red Heart. More than likely, it's Red Heart. But yeah, since this is for a baby, um, I wanted something that could just be chucked in the washer, that if they wanted to like put it on the floor for tummy time, or they want to take it somewhere, or anything like that, I wanted something that's going to hold up, that's going to be easy care, and they're not going to have to do a whole lot of like, how do I take care of this handmade thing? Like, Don't be precious about it. Just wash it. Just use it. If it falls apart, send it back to me. I'll sew it back up. We'll make, we'll make it go. So yeah, <clears throat> so that's now living in my giant Ikea um, pillow sham project bag. Um, yeah, is that all of my works in progress? Yes, it is. And that will move us on to maker plans and stash positions. Um, I do want to show you in my live love knit, which is kind of funny because this is definitely a crochet project. Um, I have, I think, all of my colors chosen for my Just Feel Better shawl. I don't think I'm dying anymore for this shawl. And I'm just going to go until, it's, until they're done, I think. I could be lying, but we won't know until I'm at the end. So I, I went ahead and wound up all of, the, all of the yarn last night, which kind of was a headache. Um, definitely makes you want to buy a new ball winder, but mine is still working. It's just, it just, it's sometimes a jerk. So let me see. Get all the colors out and I'll show you the greens in their order. Okay, this is the, oh yeah, that's right. This is the way the green is going to go. And then, then there's the yellow. Okay, that's the way the yellow goes. And this one's actually more orange than it's showing. So that's that. And those are the colors that are going into um, the Just Feel Better shawl. Oh, sorry, my nose is itching. And then this, before I pull this, this out, originally I had shown a gray skein that was gonna go in between the stripes, but I decided that I wanted to switch that gray out for a white because I wanted to keep it light and bright and fresh. And I was just going to use some of the um, the natural white color Deborah Norville sock that I had. And I was like, you know what, Kalisha? I want it to be sparkly. So I went on Etsy and I found um, a shop called, I think it's Dyer Supply, Dyer Supplier, something. I'll link it down below. But um, he had undyed, um, Selena yarn and it is a 70 20 10 yeah I believe that's what it is 70% merino superwash merino 20% nylon 10% Selena and this is it can you see the sparkles a little there we go you can see a little bit of the sparkles sparkle 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 in the yarn Doo -doo -doo. I'm excited so this is going to be striped this is going to be striped in between each of those colors 
and um, I have yet to decide on the striping sequence. Um, I kind of want, okay, part of me wants to do like two rows white, two rows of color, two rows white, two rows of color, and just do it like that because I like things to be very organized and like segmented like that. But then I'm like, well, I could do all of each color and then a certain number of white and then all of the next color. And then I'm like, no, that's not gonna stretch the colors as long as I want them to be stretched. So we're still, we're still trying to figure this, this out. But um, this is going to be my project for Hannah of the Cozy Cottage Crochet for her Love Yourself Cow, which starts tomorrow, May 1st. I'm excited. And um, yes, so I need to figure this out because I'm starting it tomorrow. I might even start it today. No, I got other stuff to do today. But I'll, I'll have to figure this out. But this, even just looking at the colors, it's just bringing me so much joy. Like, I love it. I love it. Can I stack these up? Is this a bad idea? Probably. But we're going to try it anyway. I'm not going to stack all of them because some of them are small. And that would be making poor choices on the podcast. Oh, I dropped one on the floor already. See? I do it. I did it. <laughs> it's the little things, man. You got you got to find little things that that bring you joy or bring you happiness or like make you smile. Because, you know, sometimes crappy things happen and you need to just find ways to pick yourself up. True story, true story. Crappy things have happened this week, finding things to pick myself up and bring me joy, AKA my Just Feel Better shawl. Um, so that, oh, I also got, um, I didn't just buy the one ball of sparkle because why would I just buy one ball? I got three. So I have two more. Can you see the sparkle better in that one? No, not at all whatever they're sparkle and they're super soft and it makes me happy and these I probably am going to die so because I only have two they're gonna definitely hang around until like just the right time but <clears throat> I have those um, my next maker plan and stash position is a summer bag that I want to make and I say summer bag because I'm making this out of um, What's the yarn called? Karen Cotton Cakes. So I want to say this was last year um, I bought this yarn. Or I bought this one ball. Yeah. I bought this one ball of Karen Cotton Cakes in the Boho Floral colorway. I don't know what possessed me to buy one ball. Just this little tiny bit. What am I, what, what did I think I was going to do with this? So it's literally just been sitting in my stash because um, I bought it from Michael's and then Michael stopped selling it and I was like, well dang. So I just had one ball of this yarn just, just chilling, not doing anything. And then I was in uh, Michael's the other day and lo and behold they had brought it back. So I got two more, um, all the same colorway. Um, they're all the same lot number, but of course they start in different places. So again, the part of my brain that wants things to be organized and neat um, made me uh, number them. Like I wrote down the color sequence and numbered them and wrote directions on how I'm going to work them. Uh, so this one is the first ball, number one, and I work from the outside in. This is number two, worked from the inside out. And then number three, worked from the outside in. They're not gonna match up perfectly, 
and I am going to resist the urge to cut the yarn and make the stripes continuous. I'm going to resist that urge. You heard it here. I'm just going to crochet it. You know what, I might even just take the ball bands off and throw it in a bag and just crochet it from there because this is, this is too much thinking. This is too much thinking. But I want to make like a market bag, um, something similar to this, but I don't think I really want to make this particular bag, although I might. That could be a really good bag. And it takes three balls. That might happen. But I've been looking at Ravelry um, on different like projects or different patterns for like lacy, summery kind of like sling over your shoulder, farmer's market kind of bags. Um, and I want to make some with that. The next stash position slash maker plan I have is um, I want to make a hat. And I want to make a hat out of this yarn. This is Hipster Yarn by Deborah Norville Premier Yarns, or Premier Yarns Deborah Norville. And the colorway is Parasols. So this is a 90% rayon made from bamboo, 10% polyamide. Um, and I got it at the Dollar Tree. Like, I walked into the Dollar Tree and there was this table just right in front of the door of yarn. And Dollar Tree doesn't really carry yarn. Like, that's not their thing. So when I walked in, and of course it's like automatic doors, so it's just like, Mah. and there's yarn just right there, just like, come in, come, squish the yarns. So I only bought these two, and I'm gonna make a hat. Um, and the hat that I'm thinking about making um, is, well, it's not actually a hat pattern yet, um, but I'm using my Encyclopedia of 300 Crochet Pattern Stitches and Designer Designs by Doris M. Smith. I got this at a thrift store for like a dollar, and um, this book is super old. It's not super old. It's It was from uh, 1988, so not super old. It's a little bit younger than me. But I am going to use this pattern and create a hat around it. So it's like a filet crochet diamond and then there's a bobble inside each diamond. So I think that will look really cool. Um, and it's going to be fun to play around with. And I just, I just love how they have like a picture of the pattern. They have the written instructions and then they have these, these little hand drawn charts. Like, isn't that cute? <laughs> That is my favorite thing about this book. So that is a project that is has jumped into my head, I think this morning, either this morning or last night, that popped into my head. So that's that. I think that's all of my maker plans and stash acquisitions. Check in the notes. Yep. Check in the notes. Check, check, check. Hey, I'm just jumping on here real quick because after I finished After I finished filming, um, I went to run some errands, and when I came back home, I had yarn mail. So I got this skein from Queen's, Queen's Yarn Boutique, and uh, the owner is um, Rochelle, and she also has a podcast, which I'll link below. But she had a sale in her shop, um, and I was able to get one of the last sock yarns that was listed. This is her colorway fire starter. So I am excited to try this out. It is her Kiss Sock Base, 75% um, superwash merino wool, 25% nylon, and it has um, 463 yards per 100 grams. And her website looks like she's everywhere as Queen's, Queen's Yarn Boutique. So queensyarnboutique.com. There we go. Tootie, what is stuck in your mouth? the dogs but yeah I love these bright colors look at that and they're showing up pretty pretty true considering we don't have any direct sunlight right now so you guys get the good colors 
Look at that. Thanks, Rochelle. Okay, so um, I wanted to bring a new section into my podcast. I don't know. Well, I do want this to be a regular thing. Um, just kind of like in the in the way of community building and um, you know, just kind of bringing other, like bringing attention to other podcasts or different things that I've, different people that I have come across. And um, so yeah, I don't know what I'm gonna call it. It's in my notes right now as podcast shout out. That's original. And the podcast that I'm going to be shouting out today is uh, Knits In by Deneen. And I think she has like two episodes out right now. Yes. She has two podcasts out right now, um, but on her channel she has other videos. Um, she's got a lot of videos about veganism. Um, trying, like, She's got some tutorials on there. Uh, just like a, a variety of different videos on her channel. But um, YouTube actually suggested her to me in my um, recommendations. And so I went ahead and I, I watched her podcast and she's really interesting. She lives in California. So you get a different, like, uh, like a different view of like things that I'm, I'm used to seeing from like East Coast um, podcasters or whatnot. So having somebody on the West Coast is really cool. Um, and one of the things that I think is most interesting about her podcast is um, she, like I said, she has videos about veganism she's a vegan and she is trying to, or she is in the process of weaning out all of the wool from her stash. And um, she said she didn't wanna just give it all away or like de-stash it or throw it away or anything like that. She wants to use it. So she has like a project going called The Last of the Wool. And um, like that's the hashtag she uses on Instagram. But she is like working through her stash um, to use out all of her yarn that has like wool or like animal products in it. So I think that's really cool, especially since like a lot of us are thinking about working from stash, you know, using our stash and not just let, letting it like sit around like that. So I'm really interested or not interested, I am interested, but I'm really excited to see um, what kind of yarns she brings into her stash after she has like used out all of the wool um, because like, I think like for me automatically, I want to say like, okay, if you're not using like any animal based, um, yarns and you know, you have like plant based and acrylics and I just feel like that's a very narrow view for me to have. So, um, I'm interested to see what else is out there outside of, um, outside of animal yarns um well outside of animal yarns and acrylic you know for someone who doesn't want to use animal products and speaking of that it does remind me i did find this book at my local library called no sheep for you i want to say i'm gonna have to double check that i believe it's no sheep for you i'll put the the, the correct title and the author um down below so if you are um, interested in looking into other yarns that are not like animal based or anything like that um, check out that book so um, Deneen if you watch this hi <laughs> um, and you guys should definitely go and check her out um, and we can you know watch her as she goes through the process of basically doing an overhaul on her on her stash so that's really cool um, I do have a couple thank yous that I want to, ooh, the light just got really nice. Thank you, Cloud. How long you gonna be there? <laughs> um, I do have a couple thank yous, um, for, you know, people that talk about my podcast and stuff. Um, big thank you, of course, to Hannah of the Cozy Cottage Crochet because she's mentioned me a couple times and it just, it just makes me smile and we do need to get together because we're both Florida girls and that would just be really cool and I really want to crochet on a beach and 
I have lived in Florida for going on five years now. Nope, I've lived in Florida for five years. And um, I've been to a beach once. How is that even possible? I am ashamed. But yes, big thanks to Hannah for just talking about my podcast and being so kind in her words and everything like that and just making me want to be like, um, and then another thanks to um, Quaylen of the Quote Podcast because he recently um, spoke about my podcast on his podcast and, and on his Instagram story, so that was pretty cool. Um, just to like see my face elsewhere. <laughs> um, and it's just, I'm excited to like build more of a, I don't want to say community because I feel like, I feel like community is like an overused word. And to me, like when I think of like the knitting community or the crochet community, um, it just feels very vast. Um, I just want to, I just want to have like a bunch of friends and I want to like digitally hang out with these friends. And I like thinking that like, that's what we do right here. Like this is us like hanging out and chilling out with each other. If I could like crochet and talk right now, I would, but I know I would get distracted. So thank you. Um, if you have found my podcast through one of them, thanks. <laughs> And uh, thanks for coming over. But that, that's all I really wanted to talk about with like my podcast shout out. Um, it will have a better name. It might not actually, I might be lying. It might just continue to be called podcast shout out. Whatever. That will bring us to the last segment of this episode, which is Black Fibers, Black Threads. Yes, we have brought Black Fibers, Black Threads back. It's been on like, I think a two week hiatus right now, two, three weeks. Um, but we are actually going back to someone that I have mentioned previously. Today, I wanna talk again about Lorna Hamilton Brown. If you remember, um, I don't remember how many episodes back it was, but I did speak about her dissertation because she wrote her dissertation about the myth that black people don't knit. And I loved it, it was good. Um, I read, I felt, I felt so grown up, like, like it's such an adult thing to do to read a dissertation, but I really enjoyed, um, the information that she shared. Um, it was a lot of, um, details that I was, that I was also reading about elsewhere, um, at the same time. So that was really cool. But I bring her up today because she is doing a project called Knitting the Blues and, um, she is using knitting as a way to have a conversation about mental health and um, speak about ways that um, knitting and handcraft can help um, alleviate the struggles of mental health, like, you know, mental health struggles and things. And that is definitely um, a, an idea that I have written, um, like in my like goals for the year to like look into, look into ways that um, I can use knitting and crochet as a tool um, in my own personal um, dealings with mental health, um, in, in a way to reach out and help others with their dealings with mental health and everything like that. So um, she uses the hashtag, um, hashtag knitting the blues on Instagram and she has been basically like creating this entire like persona and costume for this project and i cannot wait for it to be done um i i don't know if if she's going to be doing like a like a production or if it's going to be some sort of video but whatever it is once she finishes it and if she shares it you know with the internet world I will find it and I will share it here <laughs> but um, it's just the idea of you know knitting as therapy or crocheting as therapy or using your hands as therapy is definitely something that has been researched 
And um, I found a couple quotes that I really liked um, that I wanted to share with you. Uh, one, the first is from the Craft Yarn Council, and I'll put the, I'll link the, the two websites or the two articles that I was reading um, down below. But the first says, according to the Benson Henry Institute for Mind Body Medicine at Massachusetts General Hospital, knitting's repetitious movements theoretically can elicit the famous relaxation response, which is the body's counterbalance to stress, a state in which heart rate and blood pressure fall, breathing slows, and levels of stress hormones drop. I can definitely attest <laughs> to that being such a true statement. Like whenever I'm feeling stressed or anxious or overwhelmed or anything like that and I start knitting or crocheting, it definitely has a way of just smoothing everything out, which is really weird, but so very appreciated. Um, I have, you know, in the past I've spoken about um, dealing with anxiety and things like that. And um, I have found um, that my, like anxiety for me crops up most in situations where I'm like in public with people, you know, like in social situations, like that, that's, that's where I'm like, uh, not down for this guys. But when I'm in a situation like that, if I have a project with me and I'm able to just keep my hands moving whilst I'm in that um, environment, it keeps me so much more calm. Um, one example um, that I can think of right now was um, a few, maybe a couple months ago, I went to an art, like an art festival with um, my husband Lamar, my friend Tiffany, and our son Matthew. And I was knitting on a sock as we were walking around. Normally, when I'm in a crowd, I feel like the tightness in my chest and I get tunnel vision to where I, I completely don't see anything next to me or anything like that. I'm just like focused on like the person in front of me. And that's no way to enjoy an arts festival, right? You wanna, you wanna see what's around you. So by me having that knitting project with me and, and having that like calm that it produced, I was able to interact with people and talk with vendors and you know be a more outgoing person than I normally am. The second, um, the second quote is around that same, um, that same vein. And this one is from knitom.com. Like yoga, knitting uses physical movements to induce a state of mindfulness and affect the change in your state of mind. It can leave you feeling more in touch with the real world. It's the rhythmic, repetitive motions um, or movements that are important. Similar to a yoga flow, the rhythm of working the same stitch over and over again calms the heart rate and breathing, creating a feeling of stability and inner quiet. So yeah, definitely a, a thing I'm going to keep in mind. This is definitely a thing I'm going to keep in mind the next time somebody says something to me about knitting <laughs> in public. Get out of my face. I'm doing this for my health. I feel like I've said that before. Um, but yeah, so going back to um, Lorna's, Lorna's work, she definitely talks a lot about the benefits of um, knitting as a way to calm yourself or as a way to um, have that focal point if you're in a depressive state, um, as a way to combat anxiety and stress and, and find that inner calm. Um, and I, I definitely encourage you to um, check out her hashtag, um, hashtag knitting the blues. Um, all of the posts under there, of course, aren't hers, but a, like the vast majority are. And you can just see like, you can watch her progress of her character development as she's working through um, each part of the costume. And it's definitely a really cool way, or at least when I'm looking at it, like, and, and imagining, you know, as you're going through daily, 
you know, struggles or ups and downs and you're working on this project and you're keeping in mind the reason that you're working on this project, um, I can see that being um, a way to keep yourself afloat or at least keep your head above the water. Because I mean, sometimes, you know, it gets, it gets hard and you just need one little thing to hold on to just to keep your nose above the water so that you don't like get taken under by you know whatever the mental health struggle is that you're dealing with but um yeah so i'm excited to see that continue in its development and most definitely i will um share any links um to any final projects once she finishes up everything um, but if you aren't following her on Instagram, I, I have put her information across the screen, the screen, but I'll also link it down below. Check out her Instagram. She's really cool. Um, she does a whole lot of, of projects that, that make you think about knitting in a different way, like knitting as an art form, knitting as a, a medicine. Um, yeah. So that is today's blurb for black fibers black threads and that's everything i got for you guys um that is everything for today thank you guys so much for being here thank you for being a part of my universe um leave a comment down below of something good that happened to you this week um so that we can all share in that positivity um what was my my good thing this week my good thing this week was actually because of you guys. Um, I was able to, in my last episode at the very end, I had I, I recorded a conversation with my mom and shared it on here. And um, a couple people commented about, you know, hearing the, the, the talking between me and my mom and they commented that it brought them, you know, some joy. So I was able to share those comments with my mom and, and she was just, amazed <laughs> she was amazed that something as simple as someone hearing us talk could be a moment of joy for someone so thank you guys for being my moment of joy this week so I hope you all have a wonderful week I hope you all have a great whatever the day is when you watch this thank you again for being here um, I love you bye